We went on a tour of the area that Forestry New South Wales, our state owned Forestry Corp has been logging. And you know what? I discovered something shocking that I'll be performing in Canberra, Perth and Brisbane. So get your tickets. But I also discovered something even more disturbing than that. That I forgot to bring the camera that I was going to film all this on and so I had to use a handy cam so the footage is crap. But it did also film something that was disturbing as well. So this is a trifle of disturbingness. Here it is. It's recording, yep. It's a bit of a Dave's Dinner's introduction. But not a Dave's Dinner's video because we are about to see some hardcore evidence of Forestry New South Wales breaking the law, ripping the guts out of a local rainforest slash forest area. But this is just one of many, many sites apparently. So the news keeps getting better. And we are going to be guided by a local expert who is. Do the star swipe there. Hello everyone, I'm with Mark Graham here. He is an expert in the area that we're in, which I don't even know anymore. Like it just came out of a tour. Sorry, I'm really groggy. I forgot I'm even in New South Wales. Where are we, Mark? <laughs> we're at the back of Sandy Beach, uh -huh. southwest of Woolgooga in Goombangia country, northern New South Wales. So uh -huh. north of Coffs Harbour. Uh -huh. And currently we're at the very top of the catchment of the nationally significant solitary islands marine park catchment in Wedding Bells State Forest. In a native forest that is legally gazetted for extraction of timber resources. Uh -huh. Damn, that's very specific. So we're, we're close to coughs. We're, we're really close to coughs. Yeah, big I'm, banana I'm, just over there. Uh, yeah. that's I'm, I'm Mark Graham. I'm a local ecologist. <laughs> we're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're basically, what, 20 minutes outside of Coffs Harbour, yeah. five minutes off the freeway yeah. in an area that damn well must be made the Great Koala National Park. Yes, yes. Pretty educated man, right? Wrong. No, no, this is at an expose. Ooh, is it? kind of is now that I think about it. What a twist turn even for me, eh? Mark here, who's sort of a totally wild host, if they had the ability to not abide by the script, is going to show you what they should have showed you at 6.30 a.m. on a Sunday, kiddies, which is the ravaging of New South Wales forests under Slender Man. Not being able to be looked at doesn't really inhibit my chances of being elected. I do most of my campaigning on 2GB. Mark's going to point out how many times these government-funded loggers break the law in just one one of the areas they're logging even after the coalition basically peeled the laws back to okay you see that giant sugar glider over there can you uh not shoot him down with a crossbow if you feel like it only during your lunch break you can the rest of the day hey that was during smoko damn it he found one of my many many loopholes even in that bureaucratic environment look how many times the law is breached and that the liberals don't care about a single one of them and keep in mind if these were actually prosecuted to the letter of the law as it stands today, this wouldn't be happening. The loggers would be bankrupted due to their own inability to read. Now, let's uh, not star swipe back. We've already used that one. Uh, what are the other ones that we have available? Uh, Venetian swipe? Can we give that a go? And where the water should be pretty much clear and clean, it's this milky mess. And that sediment coats the gills and the other um, anatomical structures of aquatic organisms and when it enters the marine environment it does things like suffocate corals and it just does huge harm it's like kind of kryptonite for freshwater aquatic organisms and marine biodiversity the whole lot's just soupy so this is a breach of the state environment legislation because these logging operations have polluted the stream. It should be crystal clear, basically, and it's not. Yeah, it's milky as. Milky as. Milky as. Breach. Sorry, New South Wales forestry, but you know the environment's lactose intolerant, and yet you do it all the time. They clear forests near pristine waterways, which causes this constant streaming of gunk into the water that kills all the animals in the creeks and rivers, and because you're really at the sizzler buffet of Australia's ecology here. This place has it all, and much like sizzler, it's sadly going extinct. Because that all flows to the ocean. And then there's massive kelp forests nearby. That f***s up both of those. It also punishes the water quality of the communities nearby, which includes 
where the sitting member Gurmesh Singh lives, who drinks that water going, hmm, looks like move, doesn't taste anything like it. This is a rusty plum, which is a nationally vulnerable uh, rainforest tree. And they've just smashed a, a, a population of them here. Oh, um, so this isn't just a one-off. Oh, there's a whole host of them through here. Yeah. And then to our northeast here was all what's called lowland subtropical rainforest or lowland rainforest. And they've just driven a dozer over it. Um, it so that's not even for clearing. In they the, just two get to trees that they cleared. They just went. They did in, in the corner there. They actually didn't even log. They just drove a dozer over these palm groves and fig trees, and this. And our rainforests are our most biodiverse type of forest. And up in the corner here, so there's about a hectare here that they've of lowland rainforest that they've destroyed, and a chunk of that they weren't even logging. They've just gone in and dozed it. Breach. Actually, a lot of breaches include rusty plums. Seeing them is kind of like this messed up Easter egg hunt. Look, look. Oh my God, didn't see this one before. That's a rusty plum. <coughs> New evidence, dead rusty plum in squashed lowland rainforest with lantana just starting to come up to Replace take the, the place. the rusty plum. And a bit of crofton weed coming up on the dead stump of the bloody bangalow palm. The way these weeds just take over everything. If native animals could go watch a horror show, it would be called The Day of the South American Weeds. Hey, mates. As Mark explained earlier. This is all lantana. So six months from now, this whole lot will be impenetrable. You know, we'll get into the next spring. Lantana will all start to interlock yeah there's what that's say 10 meters by five or so meters of lantana and they never ever ever come back they just leave a weedy mess god and it is an anime nightmare universe isn't it yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always full. that alien <laughs> thing that comes along and just starts growing tentacles over a city yeah that's what that's doing yeah it's just it's 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 effectively a collapsed ecosystem where previously Jesus. Was a, a healthy Don't life support system ah that's the heaviest word so far. Terribly sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and terribly sorry to you, because now that he's explained that, we're going to have to go back to the previous mentioning of weeds. It's more of a editor's note now that I think about it. No, I'm going to keep it in. This is still part of the presentation. This is a Quentin Tarantino technique, yeah. What do you think this will look like in 10 years? That depends on fire. Uh -huh. In the absence of fire, it will be a lantana and crofton weedy mess with significantly less <sighs> diversity than yep. prior to the logging. If fire occurs, it's likely to shift the forest toward more fire prone forests because all of this fuel, this biomass on the ground, burns hot and burns fast, and it then triggers processes whereby fire promoting species germinate. Wattles and peas and daisies and all this stuff come up which is like a downward spiral of it's it's a it's a pyrrhic spiral it's a trajectory toward more fire prone less moist lower biomass systems you're getting that just want to build the tension for the next line and and they can then enter this thing called a landscape trap whereby they're incapable of returning to their previous condition and diversity boom landscape trap so once these areas are logged, you just kind of think, oh, okay, well, once the loggers move on, mankind's beavers, uh, after they're done harvesting century-old trees for such vital products as mulch, shit bunk beds at Super Amart designed exclusively so brothers could argue, I want the top bunk, f*** off, Michael! Then two years later, magically disassembled and put into a garage, also part of the cycle of life. And then once these loggers move on, it grows up, under the guidance of Gaia a hundred years later, or from her perspective, the blink of an eye. No. It just turns into your local oval that is seldom watered except now with bushfires. And here, there's not been a single hardwood log taken. And these are bangalow palms that are now turning to scungy pith. And they've just driven 
a dozer from there up there and just squashed a whole lot of subtropical rainforest. I can't, we couldn't find a stump in here. We looked, it's like, well, have they come in and logged? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, you're right, it doesn't. So these, that whole swathe down there is Bangalow palm and rainforest species. And you, you, can see, you can see where the tracks of the dozer came up. Dunk, 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 dunk. Right there it is, it's hacked, so they're the, you know, they're the tracks. And it's just like willful, blatant, pointless destruction of a threatened ecological community. When they could have just taken the road and walked over and done it that way. You'd think so. Uh -huh. You'd really think so. It's just easier to do it this way. Yeah. So we're, we're scratching our heads about this bit. And to be honest, this bit through here is like the biggest breach. Breach. Because yeah. it's pure rainforest that has just been pointlessly destroyed. Out of laziness. Unbelievable. Yeah. No words, really. No yeah. words. So we found this within, once again, within about five to ten minutes of leading our truck on our random order. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So how many of these spots do you think there are in this region? Every single logging operation is chock-a-block with uh, breaches. Every one of these places we look at, there's breaches. That is almost as disgraceful as Ted 2. But then Mark whips out his phone and shows us how many places New South Wales forestry has put down. It, yeah, yeah, I think we'll log Blinky Bill's home over there and oh, he's trying to set up camp somewhere else. Well, hope he doesn't mind neighbours. But trust me, it is way worse than what you're expecting. Pretty big confident call from me. I don't know what you were expecting, but remember, we only went to one of these sites, the easiest one to access that my second-hand teacher's Toyota could get to. But check out what we can't access. So I just randomly selected a site. So this is indicating suspended. There's no clear definition about what these categories represent. So there's still areas here that may be able to be logged further across. This is kilometers across, you know, like that's the stretch. So the equivalent stretch of that is from Sandy Beach to north of Woolgorga, an expanse of forest. <laughs> oh my, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and you, you look more broadly, and at, it's not the only one. And this is all the proposed Great Koala <sighs> National Park. Yeah. Just FYI, kiddies, the Great Koala National Park is widely regarded as the last ditch chance for survival of koalas in New South Wales. If Labor won the last state election, they would have passed it. Instead, the Liberals are doing this to it! Shocking, no. Do you think Nine Fairfax, with its cult-like obsession of Gladys Berejiklian, that got them in for another term, I think just to approve more ugly apartments? And this is the side effect of that, the New South Wales Liberals are ripping through the Noah's Ark of koalas at this point, because the entire media nexus brainwashed the public into thinking Gladys Berejiklian was doing a good job because, well, she must be, her hair's not messy. Hey, that is a terrible way of measuring someone's aptitude in life. I've got the evidence that Count us that here and... No, I seem to have misplaced that with the rules to the board game Caverna. Anyway, that's why you have to sign up to us on Patreon because <laughs> this hair gel ain't cheap. And also, do you think that the ABC and Nine are going to be showing you any of this? I know for a fact that they deliberately cover this up all the time. Breaches, always reported to them, never reported to the public. They usually try and trick you into voting for the coalition. Again... I think just so bogans can log through what's left of the last standing koala habitats of the state. So if you want more of these messages being put to the public consciousness so we can actually change just the handful of votes in a few seats that we need to change, including Gurbishas, yes, I heard about your struggle. Uh, can you give us the same amount of money you would give the squeegee guy when he does your window, even when you don't want him to? I think our service is a little more important than the one you don't even want. So if you want this media to expand and the power of the mainstream media to shrink, shout my staff a meal. Or we'll have to butcher one and feed it to the others to keep them alive. Now, back to how much damage these loggers are doing to crucial ecological hotspots. Big grey gum. Big, big, big grey gum. Pipe up the middle, scratches there, base here, koala highway on evident on the bark there. This was a big tree with defects, second rate hardwood timber, and whoever felled it 
basically was looking at the koala scratches whilst manually harvesting it. That's a tallow wood there. Oh, there's another couple of big. Uh, hang on, what, what's a tallow wood? A tallow wood is like koala candy. It's the favorite food tree of the koala. We know a lot about the koalas. We know what their preferred feed trees are. Yeah. And around here, tallow in these forests, tallow wood and grey gum are by far their preferred feed trees. And in this operation, almost all the tallow wood has been taken. Scratches here. This is a koala habitat feed tree. Next to it oh is another great grey gum with scratches on in there and they literally so you can see look this is like a highway of koala habitat usage on that grey gum. Yeah look at it go. Yeah and there's even bigger in this forest. Yeah. So right here like we've got evidence of destruction of koala habitat and they've left that because it's got a pocket you see it's a bit defective whereas this one these are grey gums it's pretty shit timber. Seriously though it's bullshit isn't it? He doesn't get paid for this he just does it because the New South Wales Liberals won't. They have very, very intentionally refused to do it, which is why if you're interested, and he didn't ask me to do this, I'm just giving him a free shout out, Mark runs Bellinger Nature Tours. It's really cool. He's like the guy with the snakes at the reptile park, but he's an even bigger legend than that. And that guy's already a massive legend. The, okay, and in this pillow case, is your carpet python. And, no, mate, please just stay behind the yellow line, please. He's that by day crime fighter by night so if you want him to show you places that aren't a crime scene i mean he can show you those places they are becoming easier and easier to find with the new south wales liberals being in power day in day out but uh if you're not into visiting uh chernobyl for a laugh like i am mark can show you places that the dinosaurs would have seen come on that is the closest you will ever get to seeing clive palmer's dinosaur park but if you want to know something that's even crazier than clive palmer's dinosaur park it's this Look, we're going to end on this. And we met with the minister in, in Macquarie Street and he told us in no uncertain terms that the Kalang Headwaters and the Headwaters Reserve proposal was the top conservation reserve proposal. Since then, forestry has gone close to doubling on the plan portal, the area of forests that they're indicating that they intend to industrially log. Mm. And since then, the Environment Minister has announced the spending of $56.4 million to develop major infrastructure within the Dorigo National Park, Gondwana Rainforest of Australia World Heritage Property, for a massive kind of tourism throng and developing walking tracks through pristine ancient forests. Now, 30 million of that would have solved all these problems. That would have bought out the wood supply agreements. No. So it would have left $25 million to deal with the weeds that have been uh, inherited from forestry, kidding? to deal with the erosion, yeah. and to manage fire. Mm -hmm. So we've just got this kind of absolute double speak and basically diversionary tactics. If the government's serious about doubling koalas and saving our globally significant biodiversity, the simplest thing, the most immediate, the most cost effective thing that needs to be done is to buy out the contracts. Yep. Stop the harm. Mm. And it could be done with the signature of Matt Griffin, of um, James Griffin, and it could be done with the signature of uh, Dougal Saunders. Two ministers need to sign a piece of paper to protect. Two cabinet ministers with a signature can solve all the problems. And I think you should click the subscribe button because the sequel to this is MA15 plus kids. And oops, I've said too much. <sighs> Let you in on a secret. Like this video if you get it. You probably don't get it. I haven't given you enough to get it. So just like the video. But I'll see you next time. Subscribe. Please share and comment below. Comment.